church. Welcome, welcome. I believe we're going to have hope in this new year. I'll stand and uh, worship and praise with us this morning.
dig in. Come on, let's dig in. Praise you, Jesus. God, you are so amazing. God, you are our provider, God. You are our deliverer, God. You are our healer, Lord. Lord, you are the, the, you are the one that was dead and now is alive. You are the firstborn of creation. All things were created through you and by you. God, you are holy, God. We proclaim your goodness right now. We proclaim your goodness right now, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. He is bigger than your need. Do you hear me, church? He is bigger than your need. All right, he is bigger than your struggle. All right, he is greater than that. He is greater than your emotion. He is greater than anxiety. He is greater than fear. He is greater than depression. He is greater than cancer. Today we gather together and we gather to worship the living God. In the Old Testament, you'll find his name given. Many times people encountered him and they'd say, who are you? And he would say, I'm the God that heals. I am the God that delivers. I am this God. And it's, it's him. But yet he, he is our everything. Every need that we have it, it is, it is supplied by him. The, the, the outcome is supplied by him. So today we come together as a body, and many of you have come here with needs. You've come here and you've brought things with you. But I want to tell you something, that God delivers. God makes things right. So my question is this. How many of you guys are here today and you need God? Come on down. Let's pray. You need God to move. Come down and pray. 
Let's pray right now. Let's pray at this portion of the service. Come on. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. God, you are so good. You are bigger than our problems. We are bigger than our situations. God, we pray, God, you move in the name of Jesus. So if, if you're here on the prayer team, I need you. If you, are a, if you are a deacon, I need you praying. So please come forward and pray. Praise you, Jesus. Church, will you stretch out your hands and pray? Will you do that? In fact, some of you, you're welcome to come out and get behind them. We're going to do a little different today because I just feel like we as a community need to pray for each other. So come on. If you, if you feel inclined, you're welcome to join. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. God, we pray, Lord. We pray that you would move in the name of Jesus. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would have your way, God. That you, church, pray. Come on, pray for him. We pray that you would have your way. God, you are so good. You are so good, Lord. You are so good, Lord. We pray right now. Church, let's pray. Let's pray for our nation. And then we'll take communion in just a second. God, we, we as your people, God, we cry out to you on the behalf of our nation. Guys, cry out to God on behalf of America right now. God, I pray that you would have your way in our land, that you'd heal this land. God, we pray that the winds of revival would move through this country, God, that people would awaken to, to their need of you, God, that they would repent. We, we as a people would repent of our sins. God, I pray that we would run to you, God. God, I pray that, that you would heal our land, that you would, Lord, I pray for the leadership of this country, God. I pray that you would open their eyes, both sides of the aisle. I pray that you would open their eyes and they would do your will, Lord. I pray for wisdom, God. I pray that greed would, would die in the name of Jesus and that they would lead in a godly manner in Jesus' name. I pray that we as a people, God, that, that you would kill the division that exists between us. God, I pray that you would move in this land, that you would bring peace to this land and bring prosperity to this land in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to do communion. If you have not yet grabbed your, your communion cup, please take this opportunity. This is the first communion of the new year. And we get to do it together. You guys can sit if you like. It's okay. This is, the, this is our first time together eat, taking the Lord's Supper as a body, as a family. What a way to start the year, amen? Isn't it great? Yeah, it's worth clapping about. We're together. This matters, right? Being together matters because we're one body. We're one community. So, so as we begin this year, this is what I ask us to do. I think, I think we need to enter communion with our hearts in the right place with the Lord. And, and here we are, the first Sunday of the year. How many of you guys want to start the year on the right foot? All right, the, here's how you do it. The first step is make sure you're right with the Lord. So let's take this opportunity as his people to, to prepare our hearts for what he has for us. Take a second and, and talk to the Lord about it. Ask him to reveal things to you.
as he reveals these things, ask his forgiveness. God, you are so good. Lord, we thank you that your hand is with us, God. We thank you that that we get to come together as one people, God, as one body. Lord, I pray that you would just, that, that, that you would flood us with your presence. And, and Mark, it says, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it. And he gave it to them saying, take and eat. Take and eat it. This is my body. Then he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant, which I shed for many. Truly, I say to you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. We gather together and we, we have the opportunity to eat the bread, which is symbolic of his flesh that was broken for us. We have the opportunity to drink the juice, which is symbolic of the, the blood of the new covenant. His body was broken on our behalf so that we can, can, can call ourselves his kids, so we can be forgiven of our sins, and so that we can have fellowship with him. And the beauty of that is we get to be together, his kids. So let's take the bread and let's thank him for it. Lord, thank you for this. Thank you for your body that was broken for us. And Lord, thank you for, for the new covenant. Thank you that that you've paid the penalty for our sins. Thank you that we have a relationship with you. Thank you for that. God, I pray that you would have your way with the remainder of this service, that your spirit would move, and that we would experience you in Jesus' name. Amen. Children shall be holding dreams awaken in this morning. Spirit come, Spirit come, pour it out. Let your love run.
let your glory fill this holy. God, I pray that you would have your way with the remainder of this service. I pray for your fire to be here. I pray for your presence to be here. I pray for, for lives to be changed. And God, I pray that you would speak through me in the name of Jesus. God, move in this house in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, guys. You may have a seat. It is good to be with you today. Honestly, I think I say that every Sunday. Is that a common line for me? No. I mean it. All right, I, I truly mean it. Uh, I just got a couple of things that I want to announce to you all before we get rolling. I hope you had a good Christmas. You guys have a good Christmas? Yeah. Anybody have a good New Year's? All right. Any babies born in the church? Stand up. Come on now. Shout. Tell us about them. Come on. Man. I'm that's awesome. That's awesome. You're you're too young to be a grandpa. If, one more thing before I get into what I want to share with you is 
is today is Tom's birthday. Stand up, sir. Let's see you. He, one more year around the sun. How many of you guys are grateful for his life? Yes. All right, who can sing? Someone give him a happy birthday. So I want to pray for over both of you guys. You stay in your seats. But Lord, I pray right now for the new baby. God, thank you for the role that the Warrens have as grandma and grandpa. I pray that you would empower them for that role. Thank you for your blessings that happen that you promise another generation, God. We are so glad for that. And God, I thank you for the man that Tom is. And I pray that you bless his life, that you bless his marriage, bless his children, bless his grandkids. I just pray for blessings on him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. It's good. This is good stuff, isn't it? So I got a couple of things I just want to announce to you all before we get go, going forward. Is The first thing is this, is, is we love, I, I love senior adults, I love you. We love the senior adults of this church. We, um, what we've done for a few years now is there's been a lunch once a month at Rodney's, which is happening this week. You don't want to miss this. It, what time is the Rodney's lunch? It's behind me. Oh, it's, she's point of one. I thought she was like, look behind you. I can't read signals. The lights are, I would be a terrible, you know, picture, you know, with the, never mind. I can't even articulate. All right, so, but, but in addition to that, is we, is I, we, that's not enough. It's awesome. And Rich is doing a phenomenal job, and please let him know. We're, but we're adding to that. So in addition to that, there's going to be a weekly gathering here at Dallas First Assembly at 10 a.m. Currently, it's in the kids' room downstairs. We've chosen that room because it is direct access from the parking lot. So that door will be propped open, and, and I'll be part of this group for several weeks. But here, here's the thing. Nora is going to be leading this. How many of you guys love Nora? Yeah. So this is good. We met this past week. Nora, Nora wasn't able to be there this week, but we met this past week, and, and I had a great time. So I'm stoked about what's going forward. The, the next thing is something I haven't even told the staff yet. Sorry, staff. You're going to get surprised without a slide behind me. But it's something I've been, I was processing through as we went through the new year, and I was looking at what can... What can I do to make myself more accessible to you as the congregation? So this is, this is what we're going to start doing is something called Coffee with the Pastor. Um, and so not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. We'll, we'll remind you next Sunday, but the following Wednesday at 10 a.m., meet me in the fellowship hall, and I'll buy you a, a K-cup. I'll, I'll, I'll go all out. I'll give you the best coffee we can afford. But we can sit down and we can talk about anything you want to talk about. You can talk about the sermon. You can talk about how I don't have hair. We can talk about weird theories. I don't care. I would love to sit down and spend time with you. So, so I'm going to open that door, and that opportunity will be a regular thing. So please take advantage of that because you're my favorite people next to my own wife, which is, ranks pretty high. So I love you guys and just trying to create that space and opportunity. Does that sound good? Anybody want to get a cup of coffee? Yeah, let's do that, okay? I know some of you have work, work issues. Talk to me. Maybe there's other ways you and I can connect. All right, I, I don't mind even going to where you're at to spend time with you. So, so let that be, be something that we can do. So I am excited because I have, I have been praying for a long time. I mean, literally a year. God, what is your plan for 24 in this church? And I, I began praying that even in January of last year as I'm processing ahead. And those of you that know me know that I, I plan the direction of the church months, months ahead of the actual, of the actual year, the actual calendar year. This stuff happens so much earlier. And, and what I kept praying, the Lord gave me two things that, that we needed to focus on in 24. And that, that those two things from the pulpit, from a teaching perspective, is, is God-sized dreams. And I'll explain what I mean by that because we're starting a series today called God-sized dreams. And you'll see it behind me, the, 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 the slide for that. And that'll, that'll define what I mean by that. But not for, now, now remove the pulpit from a second, but from the, the, the focus, the, the physical focus of why we do events and do everything else, the thing the Lord laid on my heart is community. 
is, is I would like to see us become a stronger community. How many of you guys would like to see that? Very intentional and very and stronger. So, so in 2024, the focus is going to be us becoming a stronger family. Time together, th- events that are put on for the sake of us knowing each other better and, and becoming closer in that regard. I look forward to being closer with you guys. I love it. But this is the focus for the year. And, and just pr- how many of you guys will be praying that God makes that a successful focus? Amen. That's good stuff. So as we go into, into this year and then the first Sunday of the year, I have to tell you that, that, that this Sunday, this day, every year, it doesn't always fall on a Sunday, but it's the seventh of the, of the month, is a day that, that, that burns in my heart. It's a day that hurts. How many of you guys have certain days of the year that you just don't, you want to escape? Anybody ever have that? Maybe there's a memory attached to those days. My least favorite day of the year is today. 100% least favorite day of the year because it, it requires me to do something I don't always want to do. It requires me to number my days. It requires me to, to re-examine my life, and not in a New Year's resolution kind of sense. But, but what happened to me, what happened in my life, changed my life forever 10 years ago today. It was, it was the sudden and unexpected death of my father. And you guys have those days too, don't you? How many of you guys have days like that? It's just like, mm, you know, you start getting in a bad mood leading up to that day. And, and it's a season that, that is just reflective. On, and for us as a couple, 11 years, 11 days ago was the 10-year anniversary of Lisa's mother's death. So we faced the death of her mother and the death of my dad 11 days apart the very same year. And we buried one and then buried the other. And it was something that shaped us and affected our lives in a way that is just, it, it was something that, that, that burned. So here I stand to you today, I, I, I stand to you, reflective on life. But something very beautiful happened in my life two years ago, yesterday, which changes the dynamic of, of the seventh, and that is the sixth. So some of you know January 6th for all sorts of things, but for me, January 6th is the day that my daughter Isla was born. And forever, for the rest of my life, from, Jan- from this whole season, is a season of, of understanding that life it, it, life, life starts and life ends. But yet, yet, yet God has something eternal for us all. And, and I stand here and I'm reflective of life and I can't help but look at things and look at the journey of life. And I believe one thing, and I want you to listen to what I say, and this is, this is the, 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 the genesis of the idea of God-sized dreams, is that God has a plan for your life. And, and, and I'm, I'm not just saying that because that's what pastors say. I mean, it's burning inside of me. In fact, the reality is as I was preparing to talk today, this past week, God has been hammering me. Every time I, I preach to you, God deals with me. But this time it's been personal. And God really said, Rob, do you trust me with your life? Because I stand here today t- talking to you about something that, that God has more for you. You, you, you might be on a couch. You, your, your life might be you go to work and you sit in your chair, you eat your dinner, and you sit back in your chair and you go to bed. God has more for you than that. God has more for you than, than what is mundane. God has more for you than what is ordinary. I'm here to tell you that you are created with a reason, with a purpose. And if you're sitting here saying, God, is this all there is? I'm here to tell you there's more. And, and I, but we have serve a good God who, who guides us through the more. So I want to read a, a verse to you that is not in the slide. So you guys might want to write this down if you want to look it up on your own. Or take the time to look it up. But it's Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. And it says this. It says, For we are God's masterpiece. How many of you got? Church, look at you. Look at you. You're his masterpiece. Do you feel like a masterpiece today? Mona Lisa, right? Hang you up in the Louvre? Even Travis. Sorry, Travis. Like, I mean, th- this, is, this, is, this is what, what Paul is saying is that you're his masterpiece, right? We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, right? You get a do-over, that, that, that you are recreated, that you are made new again, you are born again. Anybody born again in the house? Yeah. All right. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do good things, do the good things he planned for us long ago. 
So I read this scripture and I think about something. Our God who was so good that, that he didn't just rescue you just for the sake of you being rescued. But he says, I, I authored your life. That, that when the foundation of the world was being laid, I knew that you would exist. In fact, I wanted you to exist. He wanted you to exist. If you're sitting here today, know that God wanted you to exist. You are not an accident. No matter what the circumstances of your conception may be, you are not an accident. Right? And, and, and he, he way back then said, I want you to exist, and I have these good things for you to do. These are my plans for your life. I'll go do them. How many of you guys like to know that God has good plans for your life? This is a good thing. But here's the issue is, is, is discovering that, right? Is, is, is discovering this. I believe this is what God does. I believe that God begins to birth things in our life. And he begins to change us forever. In fact, the prophet Joel mentioned, he, he, he said it, and then it was mentioned in Acts chapter 2. All right, where, where, where your, your sons will, your sons will have vision and your, and your, someone look up Joel chapter 2. I mean, Acts chapter 2. I don't want to misquote this. He tells us that the young will have vision. That means they'll have direction. They'll have a place, they'll, they'll know where they're going. And that the old will dream. And, and, I, and I read this, and I read this. When you find it, I want you to stand up and read it, Okay. I read this, and I know this. I know that God births things inside of us. But here's what happens. Why, why, why do the old, why when we get older do we stop dreaming? Why do we need God to, to resurrect dreams inside of us when we live longer? Anybody ever thought about that? Because it's hard. Because life is hard. Because when you're young, when you're young, you have the dreams. When you're young, the world is, the possibilities are endless. When you're young, there's nothing that can come against you. Would you read the proper verse for me, please, Travis? Acts 2, starting verse uh, 2, 22. But it is spot uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall hear dreams. That's awesome. Why is this significant? Because... How many of you guys in your life, I mean, just talking very, I'm, I'm on the floor because I want to talk honest with you. Not that that's not honest, but, but just kind of a one-on-one -on -one here. How many of you guys, you've learned to doubt in your lifetime? It's not the church thing to say. The church thing to say is, is, I, is, is that I don't doubt anymore. But the reality is, is that we know what it's like to have our bubble burst. We know what it's like when we start out life. And, and we, we are ready to conquer the world. And if we do these four steps, nothing is going to get in our way. Then we come on this side of things. But let me tell you something. Is that, is that God still has plans for you. And we've got to get out of the hole. All right. It, it, the, the thing with the Holy Spirit is when he comes into us, is that, is that he takes what was once dead and he brings it to life, doesn't he? I mean, the author of life lives inside of you. And... And, and with that life is, is a purpose and a plan that is greater than, than, than you could have ever imagined. So let's talk about dreams for a second. And for the sake of, the sake of what I'm preaching about today, is I'm, I'm not talking about prophetic dreams in your sleep. Though I believe in that because God has spoken to me many times in my life through prophetic dreams. Out, out of curiosity, how many of you guys have had prophetic dreams in your sleep? God has spoken to you through the dreams at night. So, th so this is something that he really does. I, when I use the word dream, I'm speaking about the ideal. I'm speaking about the vision, the thing that, that we try to achieve. I have a dream. I want to do this. See, I believe that the Lord bursts these things inside of us. The problem is you and I, we stop listening sometimes because, because of the pain of life. Because we've seen our bubble burst. We've, we sometimes begin to doubt God because life has been hard. And I, let, me, let me define that for a second. As you may say, well, Pastor Rob, I don't doubt God. I know who he is. And you know that God heals, but how many of you guys know that God wants to heal you? How many of you guys know that, 
that, that, that God has plans for them, and you accept that, but yet God has plans for you too. How many of you guys have a hard time accepting that you, insert your name, are his masterpiece? And being his masterpiece, being his masterpiece and him being a good God, that means he has got good plans for his masterpiece. So I want to read something to you. And this is taken from, from the book of John. It's John chapter 10, verses 1 through 18. It says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who, who seeks... Anyone who sneaks over the wall of, the sh of a sheephold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But anyone who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and they come out. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they, know, because they don't know his voice. I want to pause right here before we read even further. As here is Jesus. He's, 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 he's speaking to, to a group of people, and he, he, says, he says this. He says, if anyone tries to sneak over the wall and goes to the sheep, they're, they're a thief, and you shouldn't trust them. It's nefarious. Don't, don't mess with someone like that. And then he goes on to say, he says, what they do is, is that the shepherd goes through the gate and, and the, the gatekeeper knows that's the shepherd and, and he lets him into the gate. All right? And, and, and imagine the imagery now of the shepherd who, go, who crosses the gate line and ends into the flock of sheep. What, what happens now is the shepherd begins to speak. Have you ever seen sheep that knew their shepherd before? Have you ever seen that in a video or in real life? Isn't it wild? Have you ever seen those videos where someone plays the cello in a field and their, their sheep come up to them? Anybody ever see? Google this. I'm, I'm just telling you. Go look this stuff up. It, it is amazing. There is, they recognize the voice. They recognize the, the presence of, of the one that takes care of them, that feeds them, that that, that, that shepherds them. And here is Jesus giving this illustration of a shepherd going into the flock, and it's a pen full of sheep. And then he begins to call his sheep by name. He calls them out. How many of you guys know that God knows your name? I mean, think, th think of the, how personal this is. It's not Jesus doesn't say he walks into the pen and says, and they all start following. He calls them individually by name. I ask you something right now. Can you remember when God called you? Can you remember when God woke you up? Do you guys remember the moment when you came to the Lord? Do you guys remember the first moment that you met God? I mean, you heard about Him, but, but the moment that you met Him, like, it, it was a moment that was amazing. This is the Holy Spirit individually coming to you and waking you up. The Bible says you can't be saved except by the Holy Spirit. You can't come to God without the Holy Spirit awakening you. I got news for you. You didn't wake up one day and decide to follow God. God said, you're my lamb. Come on. And, and eventually you stopped resisting. He gives this imagery of, of he leads them out of the pen. Where is he leading them to? Will someone tell me where he's leading them to? A field. They're pinned up, and he's leading them into a field. What is in this field? There's grass. There's water, there's space, there's opportunity. The quality of life is higher, and they're safe because the shepherd is there to protect them. Some of us need to leave the pen. Some of us, because here's the issue, is the pen feels safe because it's confined. The pen, the, you're existing in this pen, but what God has for you is bigger than the pen. How many of you guys believe that God has something more for you than what you're living right now? Let me hear you, come on. And as we, as we have this concept that, that, that God made your life for a reason, that, that, that he, he, you are his masterpiece, he, that, that he knows you by name, and he calls you from the pen, that, that, and that he has good work that he has intended for you to do, that tells me that there's still more to do. There's still more to your life. 
No matter what stage you're at right now, no matter how much you've been bruised, how much you've been hurt, it doesn't matter. And I'm not saying your pain doesn't matter. I'm saying that, that your pain doesn't keep you from what God has for you. We have to choose to follow the lamb. I mean, the shepherd of the lamb. Some of you are saying, well, Pastor Rob, you're our shepherd. No, I'm the sheepdog. I'm just the border collie without hair. A hairless border collie. It says this in verse 6. It says, those who heard Jesus' illustration didn't understand what he meant. Seriously? You guys got it before I explained it, didn't you? Yeah, they didn't understand it. Those who used Jesus' illustration didn't understand what he meant. So he explained it to them. I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me were thieves and robbers. But the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. How many of you guys are saved? Come on. All right, I am, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. All right, there's this promise that they, what you're going to find through him are good things. All right, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for money and doesn't really care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep. He knows you. There it is again. He knows you. How many of you guys need to hear that he knows you? You're not alone. You're not isolated. He knows you. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. He says, I know my sheep and they know me. Just as my Father knows me and I know the Father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too. They are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice and they will be one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I sacrificed my life so I may take it back again. No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily for I have the authority to lay it down when I want to and also to take it up again for this is what my Father has commanded. I mean, there is so much that's in this scripture. And, and, and I read this scripture, and I'm processing through this, and, and I'm seeing, and maybe you see something different than I see, and that, that's all right. But, but, what I, but, but this challenged me this week. And, and I want to tell you how this challenged me after I tell you what I saw. is, is I, I see the pen, and I see Christ who is the gate. He, he's literally the gate to the pen and the shepherd all at the same time. How? He's Jesus. He could do this. And, and, and he, he, he comes into the pen, and he, he, he identifies his flock, all right? It means he calls them out by name. You are mine, follow me. You are mine, follow me. You are mine, follow me. And there's not a person in this room that he has not raised that voice to. And then he leads them out of the flock, and he makes this very clear point that he is the gate keep, that he's not only the, the shepherd, but the gate. And what that means is there's no salvation without him. He is the only way to the Father. He is the only way to, 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 to be whole, right? He is the way out of the pen. The problem is you and I, we believe in him for our salvation, but so many of us, we, 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 we stop right there in the pen. And, and, and we, we, we wonder if there's more, but we're not willing to take the risk in life. And I know that there are people in front of me that God's birthed things inside of you. Like some of you guys is called to start businesses, but the risk is too high. Some of you, God has called you to, to start ministries or, or volunteer somewhere or, or give more of yourself, but, 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 it, but it's, it might cost me something. But here, here is the shepherd who leads them out of that pen of, of it might be too hard, 
it leads them into something that is greater. I want you to imagine for a second all that sheep sees inside of that pen. What do you, if you could put on your lamb glasses for a moment. And, and, and so what would you see if you, were, if you were cooped up inside of a pen? A bunch of other sheep, lots of flies. What are you stepping in? You know the smell, people. Come on. You don't have to say it. And you don't, you don't see anything out there. That's all that you know. And, 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 and for, some, for some sheep, that's all they want because that's all that they know. But here is the shepherd who, who leads them out of this. And where does he lead them? He leads them into a great pasture. right? He, he leads them to where there is abundance, where his grace is huge, where, where, where that sheep begins, that lamb begins to live. Right? That's where life is, the purpose of life is found. That is where, 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 where the abundance happens. That's where God is, is blessing the lamb. But the lamb had to get out of the pen. And, and this, this is where it challenged, because I'm sitting here and I, I'm saying, God, I know that you are calling your church to follow what you are birthing in them. And, and you know what, you know what the Lord said to me? What am I birthing in you? Well, pa- well, I'm a pastor, and I went down this whole list. He said, oh, that's nice. That's nice, Rob. But, but what am I doing inside of you? And it bothered me. It bothered me because it made me uncomfortable. You guys ever get uncomfortable when you pray? If you don't, you need to pray more. <laughs> and, and I had this, it was, I think it was, it may have been Wednesday. I was having this day with the Lord, and I kept... The staff kept finding me in weird places. Why are you in a dark room in a chair? Because <laughs> I'm arguing with God. <laughs> not really, but, I, but, I, but I'm having these moments. And, and, and the Lord, and I'm not ready to reveal the stuff, but I started writing stuff down that, that I feel like the Lord is beginning to birth inside of me for, for the church and for my family and for, and for my own personal life and, and the, my walk with him. And, and the Lord takes me on this walk. I, I, Linnea has a peanut allergy, or a nut allergy, so don't eat nuts around Linnea, Okay. Speaking of, how many of you guys think she did a great job last week? Yeah. She, she crushed it. She, it was great. But I, so I'm, I want to respect that. I don't want to poison her. And she wasn't in the office that day, but I grabbed nuts, and I, I went outside to go eat nuts, and I'm talking to the Lord. I'm in this moment where you ever have one of those days where wherever you go, God is? And, and, and I, I'm walking with him, and he's so tangible. I, it, it's almost like, I'm sorry you can't see him, but I almost can. You know what I mean? And he says, and I feel the Holy Spirit lead me into a walk. He says, go take a walk with me. And I walk through the property, and I go to the woods back here. And, and, and I, I begin to walk in the woods, and, and I'm talking to the Lord, eating my pistachios. I finally said it right, pistachios. Stipachios. And, and I'm eating these things, and, and I, I see a game trail. And I'm looking at this game trail, and it's very hard to see. If you've ever seen a game trail in, in the woods, you see there's leaves, but there's kind of a slight indention. You know what I'm talking about? It's almost there. It's almost not there. You guys that hunt, you know what I'm talking about. So I begin to walk this game trail, and I'm praying. I'm talking to the Lord, and and I'm I'm following, and all of a sudden, I can't see the game trail anymore. And I'm looking, where is this game trail? But I think I'm in the right place, and I look up, and I'm not on the trail anymore, but I can see the trail over there where it picks up. And and I go back over to the trail, and I start walking the trail, and all of a sudden, the trail kind of disappears. I can't identify where the where, where it's leading anymore. I get a general direction, but I don't know. And, and I look down, and I see rut marks. I can see in the ground a confirmation. I don't see the worn pattern, but I see where, where a buck had been messing with the ground. I'm like, ah, I'm in the right place. And I keep going in that general direction. Then I pick the trail up again, and then once again, I lose the trail, but I find the droppings of an animal. So I know I'm in the right place, and I make it all the way down to the creek, and I can see where the deer have been crossing the creek in that point. You're like, Pastor Rob, what does this have to do with anything, right? I didn't even know God was speaking to me. I'm just praying and eating nuts. And the Holy Spirit says, Rob, this is what it's like when you follow me. Is it, is it, is, is it sometimes I'm hard to follow, but it's because I want you to discover me. And, and as you journey through it, and you do your very best, but, but, but sometimes you leave the trail and you don't mean to do it. Anybody, can you relate to that? Yeah, but guess what? You became aware that you left the trail and you found it again. The same way when you follow me, when you deviate from my path, I wake you up. Don't be afraid. 
Is that a good word? And there's times when you're walking this trail and it's very obvious and you just feel the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And you know that, that He's guiding you through life and He's birthing something. And you're doing, you're doing the right thing because you're courageous enough to get out of the pen. And then all of a sudden the trail is lost. God, where are you? Where are you, God? Anybody ever said that? This week? <laughs> right? And, and, but, but, but you saw the little breadcrumbs, the little clues. You saw the rut marks. You saw, you saw the droppings. Eventually you made it to the destination. This is what it's like when you follow the Lord. Is that, is that he, he births these plans inside of you because they're his will for your life. Right now, those things that you might be resisting from God because their plans are too big or maybe why would you call me to do that? Why would, you, why would you tell me to start a business? Why would you tell me to start mentoring young men? Why would you tell me to do these things? But yet when we launch out into that, we've got to have the confidence that he's going to lead us through the trail. How many of you guys are afraid to make a mistake in life? How many of you guys have made plenty of them? Right? But isn't our God faithful and good that he wakes you up? Doesn't he steer you back on the right path? So this is what I believe, and we're, I'm going to give you my takeaways in just a second. Is I believe this. I believe that, that in, disco in discovering a God-sized dream for our life, what we are discovering is God's will. Now think about something for a second. Is that if, if God births this inside of you, let me, let me pause. How many of you guys, you know what I'm talking about. Like God's, you have a dream. Raise your hand. Raise it up. Come on. Keep it up. I want the world to see you. All right. I want to, I, okay. If God's birthing that inside of you, then it's his plan for your life. So following that, pursuing that is not selfish, but you need to put him first. Pursuing that is pursuing him. And if you're mistaken, he will guide you on the right path. Amen? Here's some thoughts. Check this out. Before we even get into that, we need to remember this, that he is the good shepherd. All right? See, I believe a lot of us that we, we put our dreams down and we stop looking at these life th through this lens because we question if God's goodness is for us. We, we, we question the goodness of God. Maybe some of you don't, but sometimes we do. And I want you to listen to me is you cannot take away goodness from God. If he is not good, he is not God. It is the very, his very nature is to be good. All right? Being the good shepherd, he takes care of us. He leads us from the pen to the pasture. How many of you guys want to be in the pasture in 2024? How many of you guys are ready to leave that stinky pen? That's all right. So he leads us from the pen to the pasture. The pasture is expansive. That is where the abundant life lies. He tells us, and here's the King James, because we all memorize the King James' as kids. The thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. How many of you guys agree? But I have come so that you will have life more abundant. Right? This is, this is his call. And if he's the one who's birthing us and leading us out, this is his promise to us. And so think about this. It is, is, is maybe life kills our dreams. But let's let God rebirth them again. So here you go. I've got some takeaways for you. The first thing is this. If you are right here right now saying, God, I am ready to dream and follow the, that dream. It, here's the things I want you to remember. Number one, God is good and he has plans for me to discover. All right, number one, God is good and he has plans for me to discover. All right, he's the good shepherd. He leaves them out of the field, but they have to follow, all right? And here's the beauty of God is he doesn't tell you your life. I remember when I was 18 years old, I knew exactly what I was going to do, when it was going to happen, how it was going to happen. I knew. How many, how many of you guys had the same information at 18 years old? How many of you guys have found that it never happened the way it was supposed to happen at 18 years old? But you could look back and see that a good God led you through it. And... and so, so God is good and he has plans for me to discover. That's the first thing is this. All right, number two is God-given dreams are birth in the presence of God. This is significant. And this is what separates 
a, a big dream from a God-given dream. Because we can all have big dreams. I, it, some of us dream more than others. Some of us have greater ambition than others. Some of us are, are driven to all these ideas. Have you ever met someone like that that is like, they have that entrepreneurial spirit and they're always thinking, thinking, thinking of what they can do and they move on to things very quickly? But what separates that from a God-given dream? What separates the dream of my dream in life is to have a Mercedes. It's not, but imagine if that, if that was your dream. Well, that stinks because that could be satisfied pretty easily. Just go into debt. I mean, there has to be more than this, right? Right? So God, my dream has to be bigger than the car that I drive, the house that I live in, or, or what's in my bank account. It has to be way bigger than that. It has to be God-sized. And how do I find a God-sized dream? I have to know God. I have to know who He is. I have to spend time with God. And, and the sheep, they knew His voice. My sheep know my voice, and they come when I call. Right? So how do we know the voice of God, especially living in 2024 when we are inundated with media? We are inundated with opinions. We are inundated with different teachers, different ideas. And how do we, how do we sift through this? Turn it off for a portion of your day and sit in His presence. And here's what's significant about that. Here's what's significant about that is that when you do this, when, when you begin to, to, to sit in the very presence of God, and you say, God, shift me, change me, make me in your image, what begins to happen is your heart begins to change. When your heart begins to change, the desires of your heart change with it. Because they become, they, they end up in the alignment of God. The Bible promises us, and we'll deal with it in the next couple of weeks, that he gives us the desires of our heart. But I've had some awful desires in my heart over my lifetime. So I believe that when we allow our heart to be shifted into, into alignment with Him, that's when our desires change. And that is where those dreams are birthed. So church, if you're here today and you're saying, I want more. I want more. There has to be more. God has more for me than, than just what's ordinary. God has more for me than just, just existing. I want to leave the flock. I want to leave the pen and be out in the pasture. Get in the presence of the, of the shepherd because he's the one that guides us. Number three is this. Ask God to awaken the dream. Because I know I asked some of you, how many of you guys have a dream? Like you, when I'm speaking to you, resonates. And, and like you can, you, can, you can put a face, you can put a name on. When I say dream, you're like adoption. When I say dream, you're like entrepreneurship. When I say dream, it's I want to be a missionary. When I say dream, like it's there. Like, like there's something that is big and difficult and outside your comfort zone, but it's there and you can't escape it. How many of you guys right now, you, you, you know what I'm talking about? Some of you don't. And, and, I'm not, and I'm not critical of that. I'm not critical of that in the least bit. But, but my challenge for you is, is to do a very dangerous thing. Ask the good God. Who, li who leads us out of the, the stinky pen to birth the dream inside of you. A dream that is bigger than you. A dream that, that, that only he could accomplish, but he allows you to participate in. Because at the end of the day, I want my life to count. At the end of the day, I don't want to say, I kept talking about doing, but now I've how come I never did? And th this doing starts by talking to the doer, talking to the king. So you guys want to pray? What do you think? How many of you guys are ready for 24, the year that God births dreams in us? I am ready for this. I'm ready to see what he does. God, you are amazing. Lord, we thank you for who you are, Jesus. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. God, I thank you that you care for your church, God. You know them by name. God, you, you know them, Lord. Lord, you have a plan for their life. You have a plan for their life. So God, I, I, I feel like you want me to pray for two things today. I feel like you want me to pray that you awaken dreams inside of people. That you awaken this dream, that you birth something inside of them, God. God, God, that purpose, God, that, that needle in the compass, that reason, that, that I, I pray that you would birth it, God. Those, 
anyone in the sound of my voice, God, that, that needs a dream, God, that needs you to say, this is, these are my plans, this is my will. Lord, I pray that right now that you, you would begin to, to put that seed inside of them, God. God, I also believe you're calling me to pray for those that have been bruised and, and are not trusting. They're not trusting you. And Lord, I don't mean that as an indictment. I don't mean that. You, you know how hard life is. You lived it. Lord, you journeyed with them through this life. But God, today you're, you are offering healing, God. So Lord, I pray right now that healing would come. I pray that trust would come. I pray that I pray that, that you would show yourself to be good and faithful, God. You don't forget your people. God, I pray that you would move in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would put a hunger in us. So I believe the solution to both of these needs that God had me pray for is that you and I make a declaration. We, we promise and we, we put our feet forward to walk in his presence. We put our feet forward to walk with the shepherd, to, to, to intentionally spend time with him. Because that is where trust is found. Trust is found in relationship. That is where dreams are birthed. They're birthed in that relationship. So let me ask you this question. I won't, I'm not going to even call you forward. I'm going to ask you to do this. If today you, you choose to mark this year off, 2024 is the year that you make space for God in a deeper way so that he can fulfill his good plans in your life. I want you to stand up across the room if that's you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. God, you are so good. Lord, I pray for those that are standing. I pray, God, that, that your presence would be so tangible. God, I pray that you would put the breadcrumbs in front of them, God, like you did me in the woods with the, the markings and the, and the scat and all those things. God, I pray that you would do that for them where they would see the, your, that you have been there, that you're leading in this direction. I pray for your blessings on them in the name of Jesus. I pray for your power on them. I pray, I pray for those, God, that have given up on dreams, that you would rebirth them in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would rebirth them. I pray that you, you are not finished. Lord, there are people in this room right now that have given up on what you put inside them years ago. And you are telling them that, that you have not forgotten that you have not forgotten, you are not finished. God bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Why don't you guys have a seat as, as Michael Barnes closes us out. I love you. I cannot wait to see you this week. Wednesday, we have our men's group and women's group. We meet together and do Bible engagement project. We've got, if you're, if you're, if you're a senior adult or you just want to hang out with senior adults because intergenerational relationships are the best thing ever, Come, be here Thursday, Thursday morning. I love you guys. See you next week. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. I just had a, a line that I wanted to share with you guys. Pastor Rob talked about Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. You all are masterpieces. Amen. Every single one of you here this morning is a masterpiece of God's. Um, welcome to service this morning. If you're visiting with us, there'll be somebody in the back who's going to say hi to you. Stop by. There's connection cards in the front of the seats. Pick one of those up. Fill it out. Just give us a chance to say hi to you. Um, they'll have a gift for you in the back. We're starting the new year out with a conversation about uh, tithes and offerings. This is so important. I know you hear multiple speakers come up here and share with you all. Um, tithes and offerings are the, the lifeblood of our church. We couldn't do what we do without the faithful support of the congregation. Um, have, a, have a quiet moment with God. Talk with him about what he wants to do with you, with your resources and your talents. He's given all of us amazing talents here. Um, those offerings are, are so, so important. There's multiple ways to give um, online, the website, the app. You can snail mail it. There's a box in the back. Do it the old-fashioned way. Um, if we all do our part, God can do amazing things. Amen. Every single one of you guys have a part. Kid service is coming back to one service. This is going to start at 11 a.m. This will be beginning January the 28th if you have children. Um, look at your schedules and 
get ready for that. We have some amazing kids here. It seems like when we do our BGMC, it's just like they're just everywhere. We're blessed, right? We have young people here. We're blessed in this church. Um, I'm thankful for the kids, for Pastor Jeremy and his staff, that they're taking time and serving our young people. Thursday mornings, I think Pastor Rob made a comment about this, senior Bible study. Nora's going to be leading that. That's 10 a.m. if you're a senior. If you've got to open Thursday morning, come sit in on that. Um, see what God wants to talk to you about from the senior perspective. Life groups will be starting back in February. Uh, we're going to be having some meetings, planning uh, with the life group leaders. We're excited. It's a great opportunity for every single one of us in here. I hope everybody in here has had an opportunity to, to, to go on to the website, to look at those life groups, see if there's a date or a time that appeals to your schedule. If not, connect with one of the life group leaders here, talk to the pastors, my wife and I. We would love to take a moment to get to know you, get you plugged into that. God does not intend for us to have only a Sunday morning experience or just a Wednesday experience. Is there anybody here who can say amen to that? Right? Sunday is not enough for me. I've got a fellowship with my brothers and sisters. I have to let them speak into my life. And that's what Life Group is all about. We want you to be a part of that. God has designed that. He's put on the heart of our pastor for us to have a Life Group. So I, I pray that you'll pray about that. You'll make a commitment to that and see what God wants to do in your life in the new year. There'll be sign-ups in the back coming soon, so just be praying, and uh, we'll get prepared for that. Let me close this out with prayer. <clears throat> Father, we just give you praise, and we just give you thanks this morning. Lord, we thank you for the word that you placed in Pastor Rob's heart. You have a dream for every single one of us, Lord. There's something, there's a gift, there's a talent, there's an ability, Father, that you've placed in every single one of us. And you want to use us, God the highways and the byways, the gas stations, the Walmarts, the hospitals. God, wherever we are, God, you want to use those dreams that are placed in each of us. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters this morning. God, you've opened a brand new year to us. I pray that you'll wake us up in the middle of the night, God, that you'll talk to us about your love for us, the things that you want us to do. God, I pray for the worship team, that you'll put new songs into their heart. Take us into new places of worship and praise for you. God, I pray for Pastor Rob that you'll enlarge the vision that you've placed in his heart. And God, as a congregation, will support him and will follow him, Lord. We'll do our part, God. God, that we'll live the dream that you've placed inside each of us. God, I pray for my brothers and sisters this morning as we step out and go into our day. God, that you'll be with us, that you'll walk with us, that you'll talk with us, that you'll protect us. God, that you'll nourish us, that you'll provide for us, that you'll be with us. And together we'll give you the praise and the thanks in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you all.